Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I'll bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. All right, welcome back to uh, the KNBR pregame show. Bill Lasky joining you. And Adam Copeland was supposed to uh, do this segment with me. He had some travel issues out of St. Louis. So I'm bringing back my two buddies, Marty and Kerry, back on to talk some more Giants baseball. Uh, gentlemen, Aaron Sanchez threw 80 pitches in Sacramento yesterday, three unearned runs. I'd like to ask you both, where does Aaron Sanchez fit into his Giants and pitching crow? Marty, I'll let you start here because uh, I I know you think that the Giants need to make an addition to this rotation. Can Sanchez be that guy? Well, I think so. Uh, Of course, we didn't see him pitch, and we don't know what the velocity was. Was it all curveballs, and what was his location like and all that? So uh, maybe Johnny will do a report for us next week if he's still on the rehab. But, um, yeah, I would think uh, it's a good sign, Um, you know, when they signed him, he was throwing 96, 97, and we ne- we've never seen it. And then he had all sorts of shoulder issues and arm issues. So those never bode well for me, but at least he, he got out there and threw that many pitches in a competitive environment. So I'd like to see more. And uh, certainly this is the time of year you've got to see what you've got. Because if, Kerry if, and Bill, if he can come back and slot into this rotation – if they need him, and maybe put Webb in the bullpen if they want to do that, well, these are the two weeks you have to see it because if you don't have him after these two weeks, then you may have to go out and make a deal. Uh, Bill, I'm glad that you brought up Aaron Sanchez because it's so interesting to think about the month of April that he had. He had a 2.22 ERA and five starts for San Francisco, but he never went more than five innings, and the fastball never averaged more than about 90 miles an hour in any of those starts. And when the Giants signed him, he'd just thrown a bullpen in the Miami area where his fastball was flashing between 95 and 98, and they really thought that they were getting the pitcher who was not necessarily Cy Young caliber with the Toronto Blue Jays in 2016, but they thought that they were going to get an Aaron Sanchez, who was much closer to that form. And I always felt that in the month of April, the numbers lied a little bit. Aaron Sanchez allowed a lot of hard contact, was a little bit lucky. And so I am curious to see what he looks like if the Giants bring him back to this rotation. I wonder if hitters have acclimated to the point where Sanchez can be as effective throwing 90, 91, 92, and with that curveball that is tough to locate. And oftentimes when hitters see it out of the hand, they know not to swing at it because it's dipping below the strike zone. And so to me, I think that Sammy Long is more of a long-term play for this Giants club. I think that he might be more of an answer in the rotation, but Bill, the Giants do have to take a look at Aaron Sanchez, and I think that uh, that latest rehab start is proof that they will continue to evaluate his progress and see whether he can help this club in the near future. Well, Kerry and Marty, the Giants invested $9 million into Aaron Sanchez, so sooner or later they're going to have to try him in either in the bullpen or as a fifth starter. Another pitcher that's down there that had some control issues is Camilo Duvall. He was clocked at 103 miles an hour with his fastball. We know he always had an electric fastball, Marty, but his control was the problem when he was in the big leagues. Do you see him coming up before September, or is that an automatic call-up when September adds more roster space? Well, it doesn't add that much anymore. Remember, the only add, I think, three more on. I think it's 28 now. He may not get called up at all. Uh, because he really didn't uh, show that he was ready for the major leagues in his first call-up. And uh, this is, look, this is crunch time coming up here. You know, we've got this game today, four at the Dodgers, and the Pirates are no pushovers anymore. You know, they're starting to win a little bit. And then, of course, uh, you we're talking about Houston and the A's and Milwaukee, and this is the time the Giants have to be at full strength, and I don't think the, uh, I think the experiments are over so to speak. And uh, I would not expect to see him up. What do you guys think? Well, I'll say this. If the Giants make a move at the trade deadline, don't be surprised if Camilo Duvall is involved in a trade because he is what every team wants. He's a young, controllable reliever with a ton of upside, great potential, 103 miles an hour that Bill just mentioned. And yet, 
the Giants don't have a place for him on this 2021 roster, and they're about to bring back Tommy Listella from the 60-day IL. Evan Longoria has to come back from the 60-day IL. The Giants have to create roster space, and one of the ways you do that is by trading multiple players off the 40-man roster. So maybe you package Tyler Beatty and Camilo Duvall together to get a bullpen arm who can help you right now. It's a two-for-one, and you solve multiple issues. You get a guy who can help you immediately, and you create the roster space for the guys who are coming back, Bill. You know, Kerry and Marty, one of the big uh, subject matters we talk about is left field. Alex Dickerson out there, he's been struggling at the plate today. Mike Talkman is out there uh, playing left field. And I go right to you, Marty. What do you think about both of these guys? Do you think they'll have a roster space uh, in the next couple weeks? Because these two guys have been struggling the entire year at the plate. Well, they don't want to lose Talkman, uh, and they're afraid someone's going to grab him if they put him on waivers because he has no options, so I, it looks like he's here. Uh, Farhan is invested in him, and uh, they've invested more than just this one year in him. So it looks like he's here. But again, I'll go back to these couple of weeks are important weeks for everybody, because as Kerry points out, there are a lot of roster spots that are going to come open, and I think for someone like Dickerson even, you know, he could end up being moved somewhere else. I'm going to throw out the name Chris Bryant. Uh, you know, I we put it out last night on Twitter talking about that left field situation. It's becoming somewhat of a problem. Uh, Wade and Ruff could go back out there, but maybe they want to get a traditional left fielder. The Cubs want to unload people. What do you guys think about the possibility of a Chris Bryant who would be under some control, at least for the end of this year? And is he... Is it next year, too, or is it just this year he's a free agent? He I'm becomes sure. a free agent this winter, Marty. This winter, but okay. if the Giants get him to San Francisco, and that is that would be a blockbuster deal. Chris Bryant, to me, is the best player potentially available at the trade deadline. It might give them a leg up on keeping Chris Bryant next season, offering him a huge extension, which he will command in the offseason. He's going to be well over a $100 million man. He's a Boris guy. The Cubs believe that of their trio of Bryant, Rizzo, and Baez, he's going to be the least likely to re-sign. To me, he is the perfect Farhan Zaidi player. He walks, he slugs, he plays five different positions. You can add Chris Bryant and not worry about Evan Longoria coming back. You can add Chris Bryant and not worry what it's going to do to your outfield situation because he can move around the diamond, play a different position on a daily basis. He would be the single best fit for this team. I just don't know what kind of prospect capital it, com- it would command. The name that I floated out, Mitch Hanniger, Archbishop mm-hmm. Mitty product from San Jose. I just think that the Mariners are looking to create space for young controllable outfielders in their outfield right now. They've got a ton of prospects coming up. I think that Mitch Hanniger will be a tremendous fit in this Giants lineup, Bill, and he's got pop. 20 home runs already this season. That's what the Giants need out of left field. It's what they haven't gotten this year out of Dickerson, Talkman, Slater, the revolving door that they've had in left field that, quite frankly, Bill, they've had since Barry Bonds left. I tell you what, I agree with both of you. I'll take either one of those guys. And uh, the numbers on Brian, National League MVP, don't forget. He's got 16 home runs this year. And I agree with you, Kerry. He plays multiple positions. And you, you can put him in the corner outfields. You could play him at third. You can even play him at first. Of course, Hanniger is your, definitely your corner outfielders. And he's played a little first base. So I, I would take either one of those guys, no doubt about it. We'll just see what both those teams are willing to, to offer up. And, you know, when you start looking at the Nationals and the Mets and all these other teams on the East Coast, they're also after Bryant. So we'll see what happens. Uh, a quick thought about your, your thoughts going into L.A. It looks like Kevin Gosman is a probable against Tony Gonzalin. That's the first matchup on Monday. Then it goes Alex Wood, and it looks like they're going to throw a rookie in there on Tuesday. Logan Webb against Julio Rios. Anthony DiScofani against Walker Bueller. Marty, I think the first couple games are really going to help the Giants if they can win a couple of the first top. Well, I think so. And uh, look, the Dodgers have taken six of nine from the Giants so far. And I'll go back to what we talked about earlier, and that's roll it into Muncie. Don't <laughs> let don't let Muncie yeah. beat you. Now, Betts' hip is bothering him a little bit. Uh, you know, Bellinger's still not doing anything, and you've got uh, Seeger still out. I think you're getting the Dodgers at the right time again. And I think the Giants have a, a great chance to, to do some damage here. Again, this whole second half, don't get swept. That's the whole thing. Split series, win series, whatever it takes, just don't get swept. But games against L.A. are important because you want to win the division. I think they're going to have a good week. I really do. I think the Dodger pitching is still very much up in the air. 
And I think the Giants with Gosman and Sclafani on the back end of, of the four days. Um, I, I And Wood has pitched well down there. I, I think they're going to be in decent shape. The Giants have to win this series in L.A. on the first two days. Because when you're facing a TBA on day two and Tony Gonsolin, who really can't give the Dodgers more than five innings, you get into that Dodger bullpen, you pummel the Dodger bullpen to the point where they can't throw Blake Trinan and Kenley Jansen. They have to save those guys for the last two days. Then you're in great shape because Logan Webb can come back. Anthony DiScafani, who hasn't fared well against the Dodgers at the end of the series for the Giants. I think it's so pivotal not just to get the split, but to win early in this series because, Bill, I think the Giants will be facing an uphill battle if they don't do damage against Gonsolin and the rookie that they're expected to throw on Tuesday as well. Absolutely, but uh, a report came out today that Max Muncy's wife is due any day now, so maybe they can prolong it a little bit more and he'll miss a couple of these games, Marty, and then you don't have to walk him. <laughs> so, well, that, that, would interesting. Be, that would be very <laughs> beneficial to the Giants' chances because this guy is killing uh, the Giants. He really is. So we'll see where, where it goes, but uh, what about Posey? Uh, you need Posey back, is it? He's not playing today. Who knows? You know, Trump is catching Cueto today, and I guess he needs another day. But you think we're going to see Posey right out of the gate here in L.A.? Well, Susan Slusser just tweeted that Posey could start as soon as tomorrow. She's in St. Louis talking with Gabe Kapler this morning. So I think that that's a good update. wouldn't shock me if the Giants waited until Tuesday for Buster just because they really do seem to give him every possible way to rest that thumb. But he will be back for the Dodgers series. Like Fabian told us earlier in the show, Mookie Betts will be back for the Giants series. Should be really fun. Kevin Gossman expected to throw. Stars are aligning for some really good baseball, Bill. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining me on this segment uh, tonight. Uh, I hope you tune in. Uh, Tim McCarver joins me on the postgame show, and uh, it was a great discussion about his career. Had a great lengthy career, over 20 years, three decades as a catcher. Of course, the Bob Gitzman and the Steve Carlton uh, uh, conversation comes out, and then he was a 35 years uh, as an announcer, he did 24 World Series playoffs, so it was an honor uh, catching up with him today, and that'll be on the post game show. But coming up next, uh, Marty has talk back. He'll be talking to Randy Wynn at Oracle Park, and that's coming up next on KNBR, the sports leader. No matter what's ahead, you count on family, and Northern California families count on Honda. Fuel efficient, packed with high tech safety features like Honda Sensing and Apple CarPlay. With legendary dependability, you can pass down from one generation to the next. Around here, people count on two things, family and Honda. And right now, at your NorCal Honda dealer, get family-friendly deals on any new Honda, like $219 a month on a new Accord. But unlike your Honda, this offer won't last long. Lease a 2020 Accord Sedan CVT LX for $219 a month plus tax for 36 months with $25.99 due at signing for well-qualified lessees approved by Honda Financial Services. Excludes taxes and license. No security deposit required. 15 cents per mile over 10,000 miles per year. Higher lease rates apply for lower credit ratings. Prices and terms may vary. See dealer for details. Offer ends 3121. To set up a safe, easy way to get your family a Honda, ask any Honda dealer at NorCalHondaDealers.com.